being closely watched for clues to the midterm elections in November. President Trump won that district by more than 20 points in 2016. He's backing Saccone. Plus, the seat was formerly held by a Republican. But Lamb is running as a moderate and has considerable union backing, a key group in the industrial region, and he could pull off an upset and turn that congressional seat. Right now, people in Austin, Texas, on high alert after a series of deadly package bomb attacks in the state capitol. Pipe bombs hidden inside the packages blew up at three homes in the past two weeks, killing two people, seriously injuring two others. Austin's police chief, police chief spoke this morning with Fox and Friends. What we do know is that they're the individual or individuals that are involved in this, these suspects, they do have a certain level of skill to be able to construct a device like this and then deliver that device to your target without having it explode either mm -hmm. during construction or during delivery does take a certain level of sophistication. Right. As far as who's behind this, though, that is part of the ongoing investigation. Police say the attacks are likely related, bringing to mind the Unabomber. Breaking this morning, a jury is chosen for the trial of the Pulse nightclub shooter's widow. Noor Salman's husband fatally shot 49 people and injured dozens more in that 2016 massacre in Orlando, Florida. The prosecution's case hinges on whether Salman knowingly helped plan the attack. Her lawyers say she is innocent, and she's another victim of her husband, Omar Mateen. He also died at the nightclub. Testimony is set to begin tomorrow. So obviously we are right on top of this story about Rex Tillerson and his abrupt dismissal. We're also watching voters as they head to the polls right now in a high stakes congressional race in the heart of Trump country. Could this very red Pennsylvania district fall into Democrat hands? Plus, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis making an unannounced visit to Afghanistan and the Pentagon chief has a surprising plan for America's longest war. We do look toward a victory in Afghanistan, and what does that victory look like? It's a, it's a country whose own people and their own security forces can handle uh, law enforcement and any threats, uh, and basically uh, using their own security forces, certainly with international support for some years to come. Peace in Afghanistan is still possible. Mattis arriving today in the capital city of Kabul, putting emphasis on encouraging some Taliban fighters to make a peace deal with the Afghan government. It's all working uh, to achieve a reconciliation, a political reconciliation, not a military victory. The victory will be a political reconciliation. His unannounced visit comes just a few weeks after the Afghan president invited the Taliban to begin peace talks without any preconditions. U.S. intelligence officials predict the 17-year-long war will remain a stalemate. Polls. Polls showing a tight race in today's special House election in Pennsylvania. Voters deciding if Republican Rick Saccone or Democrat Connor Lamb will fill a vacant House seat. This is a district that a Democrat hasn't won in a major race in a long, long time. So uh, if Connor's able to win, I think it's a, it's a very telling indicator. Frankly, even if he, if he fell short by a couple of points, it's, this is a, a district that Mitt Romney won by 17 points, and the president, of course, won it by, I guess, 20 points. Um, so I think it's a very good indicator of where, where people are, that they want change, and they, they're not going to buy what... Uh, uh, Republicans here in Washington have been selling. G. Terry Madonna joins us with more on today's special election. He is director for politics and public affairs at Franklin and Marshall College. What do you think about that? I mean, everybody is trying to extrapolate out to the nation what this race will tell them about, you know, where politics are. Yeah. Is that the case or is this a very specific area? Yeah. Well, I think that's a little bit of both. I mean, make no mistake about it. Uh, Rick Saccone has made every effort to nationalize the election. Obviously, as you, you all have been reporting, he's brought in the vice president. He's brought in President Trump not once but twice. 
other major Republicans have been campaigning. He said, this is a cone. I was Trump before Trump. There's no distance between the president on what he has done what he wants to do and Rick Saccone. On the other hand, the genius in some respects of what Connor Lamb has done is simply this. He has made this election about the 18th congressional district. He won't do national interviews. He shies away from national reporters. He wants to turn this in to a local election, the needs and the concerns mm -hmm. of the of the local of the local constituents. That's that's an important so you've got Two elements going on, so in a sense, both arguments uh, have have a ha have a rationale. So that that's a very interesting point of view that he wants to make it about the district. And in fact, people always say all politics is local, and that's the best way to win a, win yeah. a race. It, is is it that, or is it that right now the Democratic Party on a national level is very weak? I mean, you have Hillary Clinton out making you know comments that a lot of people find offensive you know while she's on tour overseas and you have Nancy Pelosi you know saying that any money people are getting from the tax breaks right. are crumbs you know there isn't much to cling to nationally on a democratic level is it that yeah or is it or is it you know what you well, said that it's about making politics local well look what Connor Lamb has done the first thing he did months uh, weeks ago I should say not just more recently was I'm not going to vote for Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. for leader look what else he's done he said I identify with the working class voters what he has been able to do is to take the union leaders and the rank and file and what have rank and file voters many of them union members done over the past several elections oh they voted for Mitt Romney they voted for President Trump. Yeah. They they voted for Tim Murphy, the incumbent. You know, the incumbent who had to leave. So what, what what he's been able to do is to take those elements and combine them together, both yeah. union leaders and the workers. The workers really moved away from the Democratic Party and helped these other. Republicans uh, carry the district. So for Democrats, there's a lot to learn from this race and how it's been run. On the Republican side, you see the Republican candidate making himself very close to President Trump and even stealing some of his tactics to, with, you would either call it branding or name calling, depending on, on how you look at it. Right. Connor the chameleon, Lamb the sham. Um, he, you know, he's, yeah. he's taking right. everything from President Trump's playbook, right? Yeah, and it doesn't seem to have worked. I mean, what uh, Rick Saccone has done, he's run a very conventional campaign. He's going to this event and that event, linking himself very closely to the president. And typically you might think that would work, but the difference is not so much what what uh, Saccone has done. The difference has been what Lamb has done, as we've been articulating, mm -hmm. with the grassroots effort. And here's something critical. Lamb is not your urban liberal Democrat. Mm -hmm. And moving forward in districts that Donald Trump won by, let's say, 8, 10, 15 points, that the Democrats are going to try to, to, to win in the midterms this fall, the bottom line here is that Connor Lamb is a candidate who's a moderate. He's not way out in left field or way out in right field. And that has great appeal to a lot of voters, and that may be a path forward for the Democrats. For the Republicans, yeah. they can align themselves with President Trump, but, but they have to do it in a way trick. that doesn't push them away from the from the you know the district, from the voters in the district. Terrific analysis. Thank you so much for coming on. You shed so much light on this race. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Well, Russia called out by the British Prime Minister as the UK investigates the poisoning of an ex-Russian spy on British soil. What are the ramifications of this international incident? Plus, after months of public headbutting, Rex Tillerson fired as Secretary of State. Reaction is pouring in as a familiar face is tapped for the job. Pompeo is a great choice. That the primary job of the Secretary of State is to be able to execute policy and to explain policy to the world in terms of what the president's thinking. Nobody's closer to uh, President Trump than Mike Pompeo, so in that regard, I think uh, he'll, he'll be very effective. 
This just in, Britain putting Russia on notice. The UK asking the Kremlin to explain why a Russian-made nerve agent was used to poison a former Russian spy and his daughter. Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson saying he's trying to rally international support to respond to this incident on British soil. In the meantime, the Russian foreign minister is slamming the UK for refusing to provide a sample of the nerve agent, saying it's needed if Russia is to help with the investigation. The 66-year-old former spy and his daughter are both still hospitalized in critical condition. I realize there have been tensions between uh, the two in the past, and, and as I mentioned, I uh, thought that had been sort of calmed down to a degree, but something obviously has happened. So. That's Senator Bob Corker, who has publicly clashed with President Trump himself, weighing in on today's major shakeup in the president's national security team. Rex Tillerson out as Secretary of State with CIA Director Pompeo nominated to fill the job. The firing ended Tillerson's rocky tenure in the Trump administration. Our next guest, who actually served with Pompeo, tweeting, Mike Pompeo will do a great job as Secretary of State. He's smart, tough, and works his tail off. Congrats to Mike and hats off to POTUS for making an excellent choice. Joining us now, Congressman Ron DeSantis, member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, House Judiciary Committee, and House Oversight Committee. So we know it's what you said in the tweet. You like Mike Pompeo, but when you first heard the news this morning that Tillerson was out, what went through your mind? It had been rumored, as you know, John, for a number of months that right. he was not going to last that long. And Mike had been rumored. Now it is true. Over the last month and a half, it kind of quieted down. So in that sense, I was a little surprised that it happened now. But at the end of the day, look, a president doesn't need to have great rapper with like a HUD secretary or an interior secretary. But when you're talking about the secretary of state, it's important when that secretary of state is traveling around the world that our uh, other nations realize that that, that individual speaks for the president. And I think, you know, Rex is a great American. I think he worked hard and did some good things, but there wasn't the rapper with the president. And they had disagreements on some things. And I think Mike is somebody, he's obviously very well qualified. I think the CIA is actually good preparation because he really understands the hot spots even better now. Uh, but he has a very good rapper with the president. They see eye to eye on these issues. And so I think when Mike is over in, say, the Koreas, or if he's over uh, dealing with Russia, or the Middle East, uh, I think people are going to know that he speaks for the president. There were plenty of indications that, that Tillerson and the president were not necessarily on the stage, same page. You go back to October, um, Tillerson was advocating for more direct talks with Pyongyang over North Korea's nuclear program. The president put out that tweet saying, stop it, Rex, you're wasting your time. Then just more recently, um, Mr. Tillerson was saying, hey, we're not we're not ready for talking with North Korea. The, the ground has not been laid yet. All of a sudden, the president comes out and says, yeah, I'm going to meet with Kim Jong Un. So especially on the North Korea issue, these two never seem to mesh. I think that's right. I think the same could be true for the Iran deal in terms of how the president approached that versus how Rex wanted to do it. And I think Mike is going to be somebody uh, who will mesh on those. Mike understands the dangers posed by North Korea. He understands Kim Jong-un um, is somebody who, um, you know, is a formidable adversary and is not going to be looking to simply disarm. But at the same time, I think Mike appreciates this president taking a different approach, really shaking up the situation and perhaps providing an opening where we can get some different results than we have over the past 25 years. Obviously, you're a Republican. Let's take a look at a high-profile Democrat and how he sees this. Chuck Schumer, the major, I'm sorry, minority leader in the U.S. Senate, writes, the instability of this administration in just about every area weakens America. If he's confirmed, we hope that Mr. Pompeo will turn over a new leaf and will start toughening up our policies toward Russia and Putin. Even before Rex Tillerson was, conf uh, was confirmed, there was concern that, you know, because he'd received this medal from Vladimir Putin back in, I think, 2008, that he was going to be a little too soft on Russia. Did you ever perceive that? And do you think that things change with Mike Pompeo in charge? 
I didn't really perceive that, although now the Democrats are saying, oh, because Tillerson was, was somewhat tough, that's why Trump's getting rid of him, which is just nonsense. Mike is tough. I was in the Congress with Mike. We were both working side by side to provide lethal aid to Ukraine during the Obama administration. And it's interesting because a lot of those Democrats, including President Obama, opposed providing lethal aid to Ukraine. They were looking to prevent Russian aggression. President Trump has supported providing lethal aid to Ukraine. I think there's been other areas where they've been tough. Mike is as tough as it's going to get. He sees the world with very clear eyes, and uh, he is a formidable adversary for people that want to do the United States harm. He is, um, well, number one, a graduate in his class at West Point, and West Point has a special place in my heart. Uh, I want to ask you about, very quickly, about this uh, report from the Republicans on the House Intel Committee uh, that there was no Russian meddling. Um, Democrats say that does not end the matter. What do you say? Well, the, there's no collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. I think we got to move on to that. Now, Russian activity, I think they are malevolent, and I think we should try to deal with that in one voice. But I think the problem with this is since Trump was elected, it was politicized, and the Democrats tried to lump Trump in with some type of nefarious Russian activity. And there was just no basis for that other than the Steele dossier, which is not verified. There's never been evidence put forward. So we've been doing this for over a year. They made the right decision. It's time to move on. Ron DeSantis is a Republican congressman from Florida. It's good to have you on. Thank you. Th thank you. The timing of Rex Tillerson's firing called into question with key foreign policy issues like North Korea and Russia on the table. Is this the time to make a change? And a victory for the White House after the House Intelligence Committee shuts down their investigation of Russian election meddling why Democrats are calling foul. He's been, you know how quickly things change. We have a morning meeting, 725 every morning to talk about what's going to be in our and newscast then, for the day. I don't think we mentioned Rex Tillerson in that morning meeting. No. And then all of a sudden. It was a blistering morning of news without question and there is still a lot more to come so you don't want to change the channel. Thanks so much for joining us. Outnumbered. Starts right now. Fox's alert. Big news in Washington. President Trump firing Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State, announcing his nomination of current CIA Director Mike Pompeo to replace Tillerson. All this coming at a critical time for our nation's foreign policy. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner. Here today, Sandra Smith, Republican strategist and Fox News contributor Lisa Booth, Democrat strategist and Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlov, and in the center seat, GOPAC chairman and veteran GOP strategist David Avella is outnumbered.